Welcome to worship on this Mother's Day Sunday. It is indeed a blessing to have you with us. If you're visiting with us in our online forum, we're grateful that you're here and hopeful that as time goes on, you can connect with us either through email or participate eventually in our in-person worship services. We are continuing our worship series called Dare to Dance Again, hence our umbrellas and brightly colored um, worship space. It's, uh, it's been a fun series to share with you. We invite you all to connect with us and run over to our website and register your attendance and your prayers, both joys and concerns. For those of you that haven't heard yet, we are doing a soft reopening of our in-person worship. We're beginning with just one worship service. It is in the worship center, not here in the sanctuary. And you do have to make reservations. So again, hop on over through the email, e-newsletter, or just go to our website and make a reservation. Please pay attention to the date on your form because we're always working ahead of time and sometimes you're reserving a spot for a week that has already gone past. But thank you for making reservations, that's working well. I invite you, if you are a person who loves to clean, we are getting ready to embark on cleaning the sanctuary before we reopen this space, which means polishing brass, dust, or really a deep clean of the pews with polish, vacuuming, just really working on our space. If you would like to participate in that in the next couple of weeks, please call the church office and let us know, and we'll arrange with you some time to schedule your gifts of keeping God's house clean. With all of that being said, I invite you with your feet on the floor, your backs against the chairs, the cushions, wherever you're seated, take in that breath of God and realize no matter what you bring to worship this day, you are truly guided and blessed by God. Now I invite you to open your hearts wide as we begin this worship with our prelude.
This week, the theme of our Dare to Dance again is breaking forth. There's been a lot of talk about breaking out during this pandemic. We've been encouraged to break away from our usual routines to keep the breaking out from overcoming our lives. But breaking is a risky business. Think about broken bones, broken lives, and broken hearts. We are encouraged to break the patterns in life of life that get in the way of breaking into the fullness of God's love, to seeing with new eyes, hearing with new ears, loving with new hearts, breaking the molds that keep us from moving on, moving out, moving up to a place where we can be a part of the breaking out of greater love. Let all creation break forth into praises of this, our awesome God. Let all creation break forth into praises of this, our loving Christ. Let all creation break forth into praises of this, our enlivening spirit. Please join with me in this call to worship. As the sun breaks through the clouds, we will lift up our heads to meet the day, for we know that God is at work in our lives, fortifying our hearts with compassion and action. And even when the storms come again, we will open up our umbrellas and set out anyway, for we are called to dance again. Holy One, justice seeker, lover of creation, let us be open to learn from the dances of others. Open us to new steps for a new day. Come and dance with us, engage with us as we seek you so that we can be risen with Christ and in Christ. Be with us now, we pray. Amen. The first scripture today comes from Psalm 98. Oh, sing to the Lord a new song, for he has done marvelous things. His right hand and his holy arm have gotten him victory. The Lord has made known his victory. He has revealed his vindication in the sight of the nations. He has remembered his steadfast love and faithfulness to the house of Israel. All the ends of the earth have seen the victory of our God. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all the earth. Break forth into joyous song and sing praises. Sing praises to the Lord with the lyre, and the lyre with the lyre and the sound of melody. With trumpets and the sound of the horn, make a joyful noise to the King, the Lord. Let the sea roar and all that fills it, the world and those who live in it. Let the floods Clap their hands, let the hills sing together for joy at the presence of the Lord, for he is coming to judge the earth. He will judge the world with righteousness and the peoples with equity. The second reading comes from the Gospel of John in the 15th chapter. Jesus said, as God has loved me, 
So I have loved you. Abide in my love. I have said these things to you so that my joy may be in you, that your joy may be complete. This is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. No one has greater love than this to lay one's down that lay down one's life for one's friends. You are my friends if you do what I command you. I do not call you servants any longer because the servant does not know what the master is doing. But I have called you friends. Would you pray with me, please? O oh God, may the words of my mouth, the meditation of all of our hearts, be pleasing and acceptable to you this day, for you are truly our rock and our redeemer. Amen. 
Nan Merrill, I've referenced her several times in this last year in particular, as she rewrites her own interpretation of Psalm 98, in part brings these words to us, not that different from what you heard Mike read earlier, but she writes, by the strength of your indwelling presence, we too are called to do great things. We are set free through love's forgiveness and truth. I can't help but focus on those words on this Mother's Day, but also as we continue in this Easter season, focusing on called to do great things, as families do, often when they can, bring great things into the world as they develop and redevelop themselves throughout time and being set free through forgiveness and truth, built on relationships. And that is not true only for us, you and me, but also true for us and God. Building and rebuilding, always creating anew. And so I'm grateful again for Nan and her interpretation and the word, at least, that she brings to me. The text for today, whether it's Psalm 98 or this portion, small portion of the 15th chapter of the Gospel according to John, invites us to break through the boundaries, the the walls, the circumstances and situations that we're in. Now, I know that's not always easy, but the invitation is there for us anyway. Break forth this day. Lift up life through your heart. Don't try to figure it all out ahead of time. It is the heart that leads in matters of faith and matters of living. And so we have these voices in the psalm talking about all of the musical instruments and all coming together in this harmony, if you will. Each one heard each one valued. I believe that's very important for us today as we think about moving in any direction in our life here in Las Vegas or as far away as North Carolina or across an ocean or two, wherever you are. This notion that you, your voice, is needed so the representation of the whole might be complete and that in that offering of yourself the world is a better place in that offering of yourself you become a part of the dance you can see yourself as valued and whole So those are some of the invitations that these texts have for us today. The dance of life, this this breaking forth out into creation, out into the world, allows us to see life as continuing instead of stopped because of circumstances. Our lives, I believe, are a series of intersections a series of weavings, if you will. I brought a few, and some of you have seen some of this before. A little weaving loom that I learned to use at a retreat some years ago. And you can see just the beginnings of my yarn going through the threads that are here and my stick that causes the pressure to bring the threads together. Each one of the intersections with these yarns, the same as the intersections in the stole that I have on, which again is woven. 
Each one is a representation of a coming together, is a representation of how God works in and through the spaces and places and stages of our life. And therein lies the miracles, right? Therein lies all of the hopes and dreams we have for future. Therein lies the possibility of creation being made new. When I first learned to use this weaving loom, this is the little gal that I made. Her dress is what was woven on that loom. If you can see it, it's red. And then I have added hair and feathers and, of course, rainbow colors representing my understanding of the wholeness of creation. Who knew that out of these sticks and pieces of yarn, something could be created? Now, I'm not an artist in this way by any means, but it is just a way to represent, I think, for each of us the possibilities if we would just be open to the intersections of life. Perhaps you became acquainted with somebody meeting at a coffee shop. I have a friend I have common values with, and that came out of a discussion about both of our grandmothers making from scratch cinnamon rolls, melted caramel through them when we were children. An intersection that if we hadn't been present and paying attention may never have happened. Small intersections like my second grade teacher, Mrs. Warsaw, who became friends with my mom for years because my teacher asked her, my mom about my dresses. Mom had made all of them and my teacher wanted to make similar dresses for her grandchildren. You see, it is those small places in life where we begin to build new relationships, where new creation is always a possibility, where then, through God, anything might happen. It is that breaking forth and removing the boundaries, the barriers that we think are there. The book, actually, where this weaving comes from, is called The Art of Weaving a Life. And in the beginning of the second chapter, this is written. We are woven together by invisible threads, meaning you and I, energetic fields of blooming possibilities. As a creator, what do you envision? Can you see the cosmic cloth it is your weaving, your dance, weaving on the warp of your life. What is the fabric of your story? Can you hear the questions that we've been asking through this whole series in that brief little question and quotation? Can you see the cosmic cloth? Can you see even the cosmic Christ, our understanding of how Christ still moves in and through our world? 2,000 years after the death on the cross? Can you see the weaving that, weaving that comes alive through how we participate in the life of the church, the prayers of the people, the liturgy of worship, the mission of our hands and our pocketbooks, the intersection what is the intersection of your life? How does it connect from threads and yarns into something else? The possibilities are endless. Hear Jesus with these words, abide in me. I will use the, friend, the word friend, this is Jesus speaking, not servant, 
because I want you to love so deeply you never miss the connection that's there. Never. That's what he's asking of us as friend. Don't ever miss the human connection that has the possibility of being there. There's a quotation that keeps showing up on my Facebook feed. You cannot look into the eyes of anyone every, anywhere to the eyes that God sees and always loves. Every set of eyes. Imagine that. As we weave our lives together as friends, there is a birth, a new creation. Joy may be complete. That's what our text offers us. Yes, in this depth of intersection of life, joy may be complete. So break forth into the new patterns, whatever they might be, for you, whatever God may be introducing you to, these aspects of love, whether they're hidden or out in the open, are different for each of us and yet so similar. The sun breaks through the dance of threads, of grasses, of our lives. Beloved friends, break through with them. Break through with love. Bring order and balance to creation. Amen. Let us pray. For the beauty of your world in all of its diversity, O oh God, we give you thanks. We are reminded every day of all of your creation with the flowers in this springtime that are blooming everywhere, trees coming alive and birds building nests and creating additions to their world as well. We are so grateful for all of the beauty around us, O oh God, and lift up great thanks for all that we can see, for all that we know is there, and for all of the possibilities everywhere. We also, O oh God, name this day our need for your healing, for the many in our nation and in our world, in particular in India, who are struggling with this ongoing pandemic, struggling with losses too great to imagine, struggling with relationships that have been broken, and struggling in spirit and faith. We pray, O oh God, for the healing of our planet. We pray, O oh God, for the healing of your people. We remember all those who are suffering for whatever the cause or reason. Help us to be your people, to share our love with those who we know are in need of more connection, in need of being in relationship, in need of being spent time with. Help us to be your response to the answer of prayer. Help us also be cautious, O oh God, as all places begin to open up. Be cautious of those who are unable to gather because of frail immune systems or bodies. Help us to be mindful not to cause harm to others by our own choices. Help us be your love in the world and be with each of us now as we worship. May the dance of your spirit ever call us to engage with you and with the needs around us. Lead us, guide us, surround us, and fill us as we pray together the prayer of Jesus, our Creator who art in heaven. Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread 
and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Our joy is complete because the joy of Christ resides with us. We cannot help but break forth. This joy is available to all, realized the community and acts and lived out in our community of love and gratitude. The Holy Spirit finds its way even and especially in what feels like unlikely people and places. Everything in creation and everyone has the potential to offer new insight. Let us support ministries that move us forward to the new solutions for a new world through our offering today. Let us pray. God of unending love and bountiful blessings, we bring these gifts to you today, knowing full well that as you work in and through us, your love and peace 
will reach so much farther than we can imagine. We commit to doing our part in your creation as we commit to loving and living in the ways of Christ. Amen. As we come to the close of our service, we invite you to hear the words from the poet Hafiz. He says, every child has known God, not the God of names, not the God of don'ts, not the God of whoever does anything weird, but the God who knows only four words and keeps repeating them saying, come dance with me. Come, dance with me. And may the loving God, the risen Christ, the dancing spirit, fill you with all you need for today and the days ahead. And the people of God say, Amen.